Welcome to CarDesign.Academy and uh, today I'm continuing my series on doing sketch renderings over a 3D model screenshot. Uh, this is something you can do in a very early stage uh, 3D model uh, with just a straight screenshot uh, from data, no, no special rendering software. Uh, in this case, this is a model I built in Gravity Sketch in about two and a half hours. Uh, and so as you can see, I've taken the screenshot, I've, I've kind of splayed out the perspective a little bit. And uh, now I'm doing just a quick sketch overlay uh, using the pencil tool. So now I have a complete sketch overlay. Uh, it gives, gives it a, a looser, more sketch-like quality. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is, is go back to my data layer, uh, bring back full opacity. And from there I'm going to select the background tone and a large airbrush and I'm going to just start to fade the outer extremities of the vehicle. That's going to give it a bit of atmosphere and to help the car blend into its environment a bit. Now I'm going to go in and uh, using a transparent uh, black layer, I'm uh, filling in the cast shadow underneath the vehicle. The cast shadow is very important uh, in helping to uh, determine the stance of the vehicle, to give the viewer a sense of the vehicle stance. So in this case, we're talking about a high riding off-road vehicle, so there's a large distance between uh, the bottom of the vehicle and the shadow on the ground. And uh, as you can see, I'm also mimicking the plan shape of the car, but I'm, I'm shifting it a bit to the, uh, to the right uh, as though the light source is coming down at an angle. Um, that just helps to add some drama to the vehicle, but it also uh, helps plant the vehicle. It's very important to get the cast shadow right because uh, if, if you're not careful, it can look uh, kind of like an oil slick. So um, it's best to stick with the plan shape of the car and just sort of shift it um, uh, over to the right or to the left a little bit, depending on where you want the light source to be. So now I'm adding another layer and I'm going to take the background tone and sketch in uh, the transparency of the glass. So you're going to be looking through the glass, uh, the side glass, and seeing uh, a bit of the background tone uh, through the glass. That's going to give it that transparent uh, appearance. So you're seeing the thickness of the pillar, uh, maybe part of the instrument panel and the back of the seat. We're just going to fill that in. And we're going to do the same in the back window. You're going to see a little bit of the uh, far side uh, window uh, looking out into the background tone. You might see the back of a seat and a bit of the pillar thickness as well. Now I'm adding another layer and I'm adding a bit of, of white reflectivity to the uh, side glass. It's really picking up the main, the main surface highlight. So that gives the glass a sense of dimension and surface over that transparency. And I'm going to do the same on the back window, but using the color of the background environment. You can see I'm, I'm indicating a little bit of a reflection of the far side pillar because of the thickness of that pillar uh, reflected onto the glass. So now I'm adding an additional layer. I'm starting to add some, some fairly painterly white highlights on the tires. Uh, just to give the, the wheels, which are, which are data driven, they're, they're data wheels, but to give them a sense of artistry and to, and to make them feel like part of a sketch. Uh, as you can see, I'm delineating the tire tread as well. The data really helps with like proper spacing of the treads and things of that nature.
Also adding some additional light and definition to the surface of the rear bumper. So that bumper shelf is picking up some light as well. There's a bit of a, a double bevel on the bottom surface of the, uh, of the bumper. And I'm just erasing where these, these uh, tail lamp pods uh, sort of poke through the, uh, the main bumper beam. Now I'm going in with some, uh, some, some of these red details which, which uh, kind of pop off of the otherwise fairly drab color combination. Uh, I envision these as some kind of uh, tire valve uh, uh, part, you know, something that helps aid in the, uh, uh, inflation of the tire. And then I'm adding some, some maybe some red tow hooks and some red uh, reverse lights or uh, high mounted brake lights. Um, these kinds of details really help, you know, make make it pop and make it feel like a piece of uh, off-roading equipment. You can see I'm, I'm making red springs. Um, gives it a real sense of functionality and sportiness and, and off-road capability. Now I'm adding a little bit of a, of a glow uh, of the background tone onto the lower rocker, and that's because uh, the ground that is closest to the vehicle is going to be reflecting back up onto those, those uh, lower extremity surfaces. And it really helps to define the, the sectioning of the, of the rocker. And then going in with a, a dark background, just to pop the vehicle off the page a bit. You're racing away uh, the main vehicle itself. So you can see the, the, the vehicle really advance uh, towards you uh, in front of that background. Now I'm going in with a uh, white pencil and I'm going to start to uh, pick up on some of these edges and highlight them. Now sharp edges typically have a small radius which uh, picks up a little bit of light so it's a great way to add a sense of detail and dimension. Uh, to some of these areas. So doing this type of sketch rendering um, is really a great way to convey uh, a sense of artistry and expression uh, in much the way you'd have in a, in a very nice sketch or rendering, but using the precision of data. Um, and so all the work, the hard work has been done for you in terms of setting up perspectives, proportions, uh, wheels and tires, graphics, and there you have it.